Hi guys, it's Jeff here, the Photographer's Mentor. Uh, good to be back again. And in this Thursday's Live, we're going to be talking with Michelle again. And we're going to be talking about uh, relighting your creativity and drive um, to take your photography business forward. So a lot of this is about, um, you know, getting that passion back because quite often you do sort of slip into the old routine of just working in your business and running your business. And this is all about creativity and looking at different outlets for, for your creativity and your experience, but then utilizing those, uh, those ideas or the new projects that you start to potentially create an additional income. And I have some great examples of photographers who I work with who create a passive income stream. And it's all come about from thinking through their business slightly differently, trying something different, trying a new form of creativity or a new direction. And ultimately, they managed to monetize that and bring an additional source of revenue into the business. So if you just uh, let us know where you're watching from, uh, say hello in the comments. And if you do have any projects that you are thinking about for 2023, something you'd really like to do, then do stick that in the comments as well. And we'll, we'll try and brainstorm ideas how we can make that into a passive income form as well. So I'm going to bring in Michelle and we'll get started. Hi, Michelle. How are you doing? Hello. Not bad. Yourself? Very good. Very good. And it's nice and sunny today for a change. Feels oh, like can you send is definitely here? here. Oh, you're not, you're not, uh, it's not sunny where you are. No, no, we're, we're um, cloudy, cold and windy. Oh. Um, so that's, that's what we have today. But yeah, it is all good. It's all good. Oh, hello, Jennifer. Have you got your PJs on? I'm really, I really want to know. I'm really jealous right now. <laughs> <laughs> We've been having a chat about what time it is over there. And Mark, you made it. I know you said this was the first one you were going to be able to make um so that is amazing and michael from Pittsburgh. hi michael a squeaky toy i'm really sorry he just the dog just went to pick it up but he stopped now completely distracted me we've got loads of people from lots of different places <laughs> jennifer says it's flannel too you must be nice and warm i'm so cold <laughs> <laughs> So, so with regards to uh, hi Alex, how are you doing? So, with regards to uh, creativity and, and and reigniting your your creativity for your photography business, because I know how easy it is to slip into this stuff. I mean, I I got like that, especially with the weddings and boudoir. After you know, hundreds of weddings and thousands of boudoir shoots, but it is good to think of things differently as opposed to just you know, going into the same routine, uh, keep you up in your game and, and challenge yourself creatively as well. But when you do this, this can lead, as we've just been saying at the beginning there, to a lot of great other ideas. The dog's back for his toy. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> he just handed it to me. Um, I'm really sorry because it's right next to the microphone. So if he's annoying, do let me know. But He's a big guy. He's certainly a big this guy. This is Pedro. <laughs> Everybody can say hello. I'm just dog sitting and I give him back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tonight in fact so i do apologize if he steps into the shop because you can probably tell i'm in a different location um but he has been sleeping and i thought he was going to continue to sleep but yeah i do apologize about that but yeah creativity i think is something that as we start becoming um a photography business and we start focusing on the marketing, we start focusing on the accounts, on all the business side of stuff, the promotion, the money, earning money out of a business. We can tend to lose that creativity side of us. And I know when I owned a high street studio myself and I was shooting sort of six sessions a day, I, I just, it was the same thing over and over again. And I just lost that spark of photography and it became more about business than it did about the creativity of photography, um, which was such a shame because that's why I started in the first place. So with regards to um, you know, taking things forward with, with businesses um, and you, know, you, you, you get into this routine, you're doing the same thing. 
And I, I've got a great example of a, a, a pet photographer, dog photographer, who I work with on board my program called Carol, Carol Ascott. And she's a, a, to, a dog photographer. And obviously she's going through the, you know, the, the daily photographing of dogs within her business. But then she looked at a different idea to, to uh, create a book project for highlighting some of the rescues uh, and showcasing the rescues. And that became um, a, a, a project that she could monetize and then get book sales and shoot sales from as well. And it also positioned her as a bit of an authority within her local area, working with rescues. And she was able to give something back to that, to those charities that she really, really cared about. So this was thinking of a different idea and taking that idea um getting some some of your creative talents and utilizing them not just for your customers but for other companies and other people who, other businesses that, that can utilize your creative services yeah and i think being creative is just so important to every single one of us as a photographer who wants to move forward if you want to be a better photographer you always have to look outside the box and look at your creativity and drive yourself forward. And if you lose that creativity side of things, I think you can you can almost lose the passion, lose the motivation, lose the things that drive you forward. And if they can make that extra income, like you say, with having a passion for, for the dogs, and then it then produces that, that extra income even better because we're earning something from what we're doing and maybe we're doing it with a little bit of variety i know i mentioned um to jeff not a lot of people know that i actually photograph the book covers which is also the, the sort of passive income side of it but i started photographing them purely because i wanted to do something different to what i was doing every day in my photography and it was something i didn't need to wait on for someone i could literally pick the camera up and say right i'm gonna go out today and i'm gonna photograph doorways or I'm going to photograph just walk around the streets and see what happens so that I could then open the box to creativity outside of what I already do because if you're say you're a portrait photographer and you're constantly photographing families well there's nothing wrong with going okay I want to take my creativity to street photography for a day go out with the camera and see what happens you know and then that can become creative, set your spark. And when you come back into the family studio, you may have seen a pose a kid's done on the street that you think would look really cool in the studio because you can combine the two. And I think if we allow ourselves to become a little bit too focused in our creativity and our sort of like we niche in this, but we can't go out and try anything else, we can't go and play with anything else, then I think that can become a real shame as well from a creativity perspective because uh i've often said and and i remember there was a gentleman that we both know jeff and i can't remember his name off the top of my head right now who's going to be doing a different type of course on street photography and architect stuff and i know in my motorcycle stuff i shoot i would love to get better at photographing the behind the background the buildings the streets and then putting the bike in there and you guys if you're a say you do just child photography or dog photography you may want to do the same go and learn from a street photographer go and learn from someone who shoots buildings and then see how you can put the dog in front of the building with the new knowledge you have and that new knowledge helps to keep you creative it helps you to keep growing and then all of a sudden you might be writing a book as jeff said on you know dogs and buildings or dogs and crazy buildings you just yeah. you don't know what you're going to end up leading to a new passive income for you and uh yes luke you are very much true um dave wall is to blame for the stuff we do with the book covers <laughs> completely he is to blame for the fact i shoot um door handles and things but it's just it's literally going out and playing again i've even picked up my phone banned my camera and said right I'm going to go for a walk for an hour and I'm going to see what light hits where and it could be the light hitting a leaf it could be the light hitting a building it could be the light hitting a part of the road and just literally looking for light on my walk and using 
the camera using the, the phone to not necessarily do the technical side because all those phones are still really good you know we can't yeah. get that to the field we can't get that perfect photography image but what we can do is pick up the phone go out and look for light and as photographers light is one of the most important parts of what we do understanding the light seeing the light the light is what creates us the atmosphere what mm -hmm. creates the mood of the image what creates what we do and just by taking away all your equipment and your lenses, suddenly you're restricted with this one little piece of gadget, this phone. I haven't even got it near me to hold it up. And you have to utilize that just by looking at one part of the image, which is light. And I love that. I love going out and just playing with what one particular thing. You know, with the, with the book covers, I might say to myself, right, I've got a white rose. I'm going to go out and shoot a right white rose. What can I do with it? How can I expand? How can I create something different? And I think and, the other thing is, is, as well as that, is looking at, you know, you know, you've got a huge amount of knowledge and experience and skill within your niche and your sector. And like, you know, I have in, 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 in my niche and sector, I know a lot of photographers who have in their niche and particular sector. So it's also looking at using your creativity and your ideas to not just serve your clients but to help your clients so i have a um, food photographer um, who's very successful food photographer francesco sapenza who's who's on linkedin here and he's a, a, a food photographer based in new york so he's created a really cool um program a course passive income course and it's not directed um at other photographers it's directed at his end users who he sells to which is uh, front of house staff uh chefs restauranteurs on how to take really nicely stylized um, creative images of their dishes, of their food, um, with just an iPhone. So he's not going into the, you know, the shutter speed and aperture and all that sort of stuff. He's he's looking at the compositional aspects and how to take this, because a lot of them will take these horrendous pictures underneath the pass with that yellow light, you know, that keeps the dishes warm, and then bang them on their Facebook feed. But if they go on the Facebook feed and they don't look attractive, it's not going to get people into their restaurant and eating food. So he's created this great program, this great course that teaches his end users on how to do it themselves. Um, they will still need him to go out and do photography. But, um, you know, if they just have some special dishes or they just want to do some some stuff for the social media, then, they've, you know, they, they've got that talent and it's a passive income. And the other good thing is, he can be selling these courses to restaurants in Paris, in Lithuania, you know, anywhere in the world. He's not, he's no longer just limited to selling his skills and his knowledge to New York or, or you know, within that particular area. So it's thinking about what talent you have and how you can utilize that to, you know, um, inspire and and be creative for the end user which again could be families you know you could create a course on how to take great pictures outdoor pictures of your of your kids with your iphone yes yes you might you might potentially not i don't think really but you might potentially move away from a few customers within your area because they might just do it on your on your on their iPhone, but ultimately, you know, if they want a professional photographer, they're still going to come to you. But what that's allowing you to do is hit mums and 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 dads anywhere in the world with your knowledge and your course and sell that. So you're not you're no longer just looking at on your doorstep for customers. You've got that passive income that you can utilize and sell to anybody in the world. Yeah, hundred percent. It just gives you so so much many more bows to your belt so to speak is that the right way of saying it <laughs> post your string that's it something like that don't ask me to do posts today as it's obviously not a good day for that today um yeah it's just um it's just yeah it's just brilliant and the things you can come up with and where you can push your photography to as well by doing these things is is just amazing and mm. i think it's such a shame that we end up getting you know like Garrett said just a bit earlier that he's been falling into that workspace of not doing anything fun and just doing the work. And so he's been doing some um, sort of time for print shoots, which are for him and the model for creativity. And I 100 percent 
suggest doing that but there's mm. those days where you maybe can't book a model or you don't have the time to book the model and you maybe find yourself a session's just cancelled and you're sitting there thinking oh another session's cancelled or this session's cancelled what am I going to do this afternoon or I suppose I'll just sit and do the accounts which the accounts is really important but actually if you then suddenly went right I'm going to go out and buy chocolate cake and I'm going to look at how many ways I can light a chocolate cake. Or you're going to take a skull out, which is Luke's comment of <laughs> not looking as dodgy with a skull. Um, and Mark, we, we, we don't, it's like Fight Club, we don't talk about whether the skulls are real or fake. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's that kind of thing of thinking, right, what have I got? What can I play with? And... Mm -hmm instead of allowing a, an hour where that session was meant to be of self-doubt, negativity, where you're sitting there thinking, oh God, it's just not working. I've had another cancellation. If you use that time in a positive way to go and get more creative, and then you're putting images up of behind the scenes of you being creative because you could film that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you've got social media content, which again is going to lead to more bookings and more things because you're doing something a little bit different. And you can put it in your stories, you can put it in your reels, you can, you know, all of this stuff can lead on and on and on to lots of different things. Mm -hmm. It could even be that you don't take the camera out, but you decide to look, use a new technique in Photoshop that you've seen on YouTube. Maybe it's that that you start playing with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then you can create a course on how to do all these things in on photoshop <laughs> yeah. and you can combine your you know one of your passions with um you know say for instance you are a pet photographer um then you could create a, a book on in your local area on you know 20 best dog walks within your area all you need is you know your camera your mobile or your mobile phone to take images you can track it on a fitbit and we can record all this, and then you can actually self-publish this book. It is a book that's going to earn additional money. I mean, I, I what occurred to me the other week, as in my Facebook news feed, was the amount of interaction and likes and comments and people saying, "Oh, I've got to buy that. I've got to buy that." And somebody had created a book, and it was a, a it, it was a photographer who'd created a book on the uh, the North Coast Five Hundred. So this is a five hundred mile round trip across the northwest coast of Scotland. It's absolutely, it's amazing. And this person has catalogued it in their camper van and catalogued the route and taken amazing, fantastic photographs and produced it as a book. And it, and this is, you know, it's become quite trendy to go off and do that. And I know Luke's, Luke's got his camper van. So you could, you know, you could actually do something like that. You could do um, uh, a traveler's guide to your local area if that hasn't been done and utilize your your photographic skills to create this this great guide and then get some get some knowledge get some history get some stories in there as well and put that up as a book and that increases your authority you become a published author uh, it's so easy for us to do stuff like this with with the likes of amazon and print on demand uh, one of the things i've done uh, decided to do for my own goals for for 2023 is is to write a book on um, capital cities of uh, Eastern Europe. So I did my first one at uh, New Year there um, on um, on Latvia, and the next one is going to be uh, Bratislava. Then I'm going to move on and and and, and catalogue as many different cities, take loads of pictures, and write a photographer's guide to this and publish it as a book. The other great thing is it's you know it's a it's a tax write off as well, isn't it? You know, so it it is a legitimate business expense so it means i get to travel which is one of my big passions and on top of that i can do the photographs and i can produce something which could ultimately lead to more and develop a passive income as well not only that but if your habit is to get fit these walks will be awesome <laughs> yeah, yeah totally totally you know it doesn't necessarily have to be created as a book you could create it as um you know as a as a series of blogs or you could actually film it as you go and create it as a, a something for your YouTube channel. It's just about thinking outside the box, trying to get yourself known a bit more, standing out for your your ideal clients, um, giving them something, utilizing your skills and your knowledge to help them 
so you know if you're a dog photographer you'd be helping the dog community in your area if you catalog and write some amazing dog walks to and you can say you know get off the sofa stop going around the same walk every week try one of my fantastic dog walks you know so it's getting you in front of people who are potentially your ideal clients um so there's loads of different ways you can you can do this you could if you're a wedding photographer you could create a guide on how to have a stress-free wedding morning or um about style tips for wedding you know dressing a wedding dressing a wedding table there's loads and loads of different things you can utilize your creativity and think outside the box for your style of photography um and give yourself a project give yourself something different to do has anybody got any ideas for what they would like to do what how could you potentially create combine your your skill or your hobby as um um that you have with your photography and with your knowledge to serve maybe a different market or develop a passive income for your business i think further up there was a few people at the beginning i said mark said he wants to do a project on um beef farming for his degree and we had someone else say they want to do uh get an underway with a more farming rural life photography and focusing on specific breeds of horse to photograph at liberty so that sounds pretty amazing. And um, one said different types of prints to be adding to his landscapes and portraits. And I think we have one wanting to do a project on nurses in New York um, and everything they've been through over the last however many years, 9-11 pandemic and other major things. What a lovely thing to do. Yeah, um, absolutely fantastic. And that would get, you know, that would get a lot of, a lot of attention on you know podcasts and and, and local news and, and newspapers um so anything that is uh you know pushing the, the good that others does and that you utilize your skills as a photographer to to showcase um inspiring people i think that's fantastic and likewise with with tracy you know with her her idea to to focus on certain rare breeds of horses there's you know there's I know not far from me is a, is a Clydesdale horse rescue center and they sell, you know, Clydesdale books, Clydesdale calendars. And you, you could, when you're creating this, you could be photographing a particular breed of horse in Derbyshire throughout the year, throughout the seasons, every single month. So then you have a calendar and that is, that is evergreen content because, you know, that will, that will work again for the following year. You've just got to change the dates on the calendar. The images will work the same and that will be really appealing to, to horsey type people and the, um another thing is journals you know people like um journals and and that's a real big thing on amazon to create what they call low content books books that are like journals that maybe have a few images in but there's lots of pages there for people to write and take notes so you know perfect present for for little girls i know my daughter was absolutely mad on horses you know and you could have that personalized my horse journal uh, and filled with uh, pages where they can write their stuff in and each you know every couple of pages has some images so there is a lot of potential there combining your, your love of horses with your photography as well yeah definitely i would say if you're i, I want to know what a can, canola farmer is i have no idea what it is can, canola farmer is it jennifer i i've no idea what i'm gonna have to google that afterwards unless you want to message me or let me know what type of farmer that is because I've never ever heard of it I think um one of the things to remember when you start feeling burnt out and you're losing your creativity is that the best thing you can do oh rapeseed okay never knew that was the name for that I learn something every day um is that you the best thing you can do is block out a week to just play and shoot without mm -hmm. anything else in mind you just go out play and shoot you just go on walks you do whatever it is you need to do you go out and take pictures and i think that's really really important especially when we're close to burnout that we stop everything else for a week and i know that goes against every single little bit of brain of what you should do and if you really think you can't do a week, then do a day. Because if you keep pushing when you're heading to burnout and you've lost your creativity, you've lost your motivation, you're not feeling in the right place to be creative, 
the worst thing you can do is keep trying to push through it and keep trying to work and keep trying to to do things that aren't going to relight that creativity and that aren't going to step back and allow you to do that and I think as a photographer and in business we often feel guilty for taking a day off we feel guilty for taking an afternoon off we feel guilty for taking an hour off but we need to be doing this for our own creativity and that doesn't even mean going out with the camera it could be if you guys love films I don't watch much tv but when I do watch a film, I constantly sit there and I look at the lighting and I look for creativity from it. And that's kind of how I do it. Or I'll go for a walk around town or I'll go for a walk in a bookshop and I'll look at all the images in the bookshop or on the streets, you know, up on the in the shop windows. And and I'll start trying to sort of build that feeling of creativity back to pull me back from where you could be heading which is the burnout session you mm-hmm. know which is is where you're going i'm just trying to think of an extreme most of you probably haven't been there but i'm just trying to think if you are heading that way and that's why you've jumped into this then that gives you a way of starting to move forward it's, it's just allowing yourself to you know sort of pull back from everything else you're doing and allowing yourself to relight passion or creativity Mm. and photographing something you've never photographed before can help that because it's not for money. And sometimes when you're doing it, it doesn't mean later on, it's not going to be for the passive income. Like you've been saying, you know, you could go and shoot the horses and then suddenly you decide to do the calendar 12 months later and you photographed all these beautiful horses and, and you can, you can bring that passive income in later. But sometimes when you go out with the camera and you think, right, whatever I'm doing has to make me money it cuts the creativity off straight away for mm-hmm. it has done for me before because even you know when i go out and do these these new things with the, the stock photography stuff that i do it doesn't matter if i go out and shoot for an hour and i get nothing that's okay in my head because i although it's great to get the passive income and the passive income is amazing and i want as many passive income stuff as i can do at the same time i don't want to make my brain switch off because it's thinking you have to make money from this Mm -hmm. i want my brain to enjoy the moment to enjoy what it's creating and just have fun with it and if i get back and it's absolutely crap and i never want to see these pictures again and i'm going to delete them that's okay at least i had fun with it and it wasn't because i felt like i had to do it it was because i wanted to do it And that's what often happens if you're photographing a lot of people and a lot of sessions in a day. It becomes monetary. It becomes, I have to shoot this. I have to get the money shot. They have to stand, sit, lay, lay on the floor, Mm. hold the baby, put the baby here, put the baby there, look down at the baby, close your eyes, look up at the baby, hug the baby. You know, all of that that we do every day in a family session. You are shoot photographing for money and that can in a way put too much pressure on your photography and your creativity so you can step back and mark has just said you know stopping taking photos for a period of time has has been the same i've known photographers that have gone past the point and had to stop photographing for a section of time before they came back into being themselves again Mm. Yeah, and, and I mean, I think it's, point. I think it's nice to have that break now. And, and, and funny enough, that is, you know, that's why my mentor in business came from. From a break in photography was became the passion too, because you know, one of my other, my big three passions of photography, marketing. As sad as it sounds, I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to marketing and travel. And then you know, I thought, well, why not combine a marketing course for photographers to help my fellow photographer friends improve their business? So that is how that came about. I mean, another good idea to do, and um, I'm going. To, I've got one to try. I'm going to try and book one in. Well, definitely, I've sort of like committed to doing it. It's just fitting the time in next next month. Is to I don't know if you've heard of this. Do like a train to nowhere. So what you do is you 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 you, you pick a day and then jump on a train, or you can book a train in advance, and you can you can go to to a destination that you've never been, and 
if you're brave enough, don't take your phone with you, just take a notepad and then go to a destination that you've never been before, go for a really nice coffee. You could take your camera, take some pictures if you want at this new this new city and then use it for a bit of a brainstorming time. And I find that some of my most productive times are in cafes that I've never been in, when I'm getting myself away from the office, I'm getting myself away from the house and in a different destination. And funny enough, one of my friends is a, 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 is a what I call a proper author. I, I class myself as a pretend author because I'm self-published and I'm on Amazon. She's a proper author. She has a book deal with a big publisher and she was running behind on her book deadline. So her publisher sent her away to, they've got a writer's retreat uh, on the Outer Hebrides in Scotland and there's actually no Wi-Fi and there's no signal. So she ended up going to stay in this like log cabin for three weeks and the productivity just, wow, amazing because you've got no distractions. And it's quite, it's sometimes hard to get yourself into that thinking outside the box and thinking of a project or thinking of an idea when you've got a phone beeping, you've got a laptop beeping, you've got the draw of the business. So it's sometimes nice to just say, I tell you what, next Wednesday, I'm going to jump on a train. I'm going to go to Edinburgh. I haven't been to Edinburgh for years. I'm going to go to Edinburgh. I'm going to have a nice coffee. I'm going to leave the phone at home. I'm going to leave the laptop, right? And then I'm just going to be unavailable for the day, but I'm going to take an old fashioned notepad and a pen and sit down and get some ideas down and have a nice bit of cake and a nice coffee somewhere and then come back, you know, and then take your camera if you want to take some pictures and then you can do, you know, as long as you've got your camera without your mobile phone, you're not going to be tempted to go onto Facebook and, and then start checking your emails and stuff like that. Yeah. What amazing. Just a change of environment can be so big for your creativity. Like you say, just going somewhere you've never been before can open up so much in your headspace and your mind space and, and what you're doing they say to to look around you at your environment and see your environment really shapes what your habits are and what you do as well as your creativity so have a look around you now wherever you're sat if you're sat somewhere you're always sat is the space inviting and creative to you as well so as well as changing and moving and going off to somewhere which by the way I'm now going to try (laughs) <laughs> I'm so doing that idea myself I love the idea of that um it's also looking at the environment you're in now and is it inspiring do you have pictures of your dream around you I know you do on your computer you have a picture of things you're working towards yeah. mm-hmm. or if you look around you is there just nothingness is it bland is it plain does it make you feel good or bad? Does it make you feel nothing? Some spaces, if you haven't designed it to be creative or motivating, can just be, meh, I'm here. Yeah. It's all right. Um, and it can be as simple as putting a favorite quote on the wall next to you. Or I have um, a beautiful uh, image from one of the photographers I love up on the wall. And that's almost a reminder of, you know, my passion and and how much I love what they do and how I want to grow as a photographer so it could be if you're looking at a photographer you would love to look about look look you'd like to be like even get my words out and somebody you look up to and is motivating that can be a great person to buy a piece of wall art from Mm -hmm. where you've got their imagery in your in your space to help you know, you're going to look up it and think one day I'm going to be able to do that or I'm on my way to becoming just as good as that person. Mm -hmm. And you can use it as a way to inspire you to put the phone down and stuff. Um, Tracy, I would take my phone, if I'm honest, but I would have it on aeroplane mode so that um, I wouldn't actually look at it, use it or touch it unless I had an emergency. Mm. So I mean, I'd, 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 be, I'd be perfectly fine going now because I've actually run out of data and it's coming towards the end of the <laughs> month. So I, I can't get in the way of fine. But funny enough, I've, my next trip is going to be Dundee in Scotland. So I've, I've been on, had a look how easy it is to get from where I am is you know, two trains to get to Dundee. And the reason I want to go to Dundee is I love fruit cake and Dundee is legendary for Dundee cakes. So I thought, go to Dundee and have a slice of Dundee cake in a cafe in the centre of Dundee with my notepad and start doing some brainstorming because I'm just in the, the writing phase of my, my fourth book now. But when you talk about inspirational stuff, I mean, behind me there, that is uh, one of my quotes, uh, with a, a quote that I really love. Uh, 
behind me. On this side here, I've got um, my world map, and I think there's 44 pins in there of the different countries I've been to. My my goal is to hit 100 before I die, so I better hurry up and start getting some more. <laughs> pins. And then I've got, as you see there, that that is um, that's Chernobyl, and then in front of me, I've got North Korea. So I do like to put up pictures of like some of the unusual destination I've been to, and it just reminds me of the excitement of travel and. And because that is one of my other passions. And then on this side of the wall here, I've got my wall planner. And one of the things I did at the beginning of this year is I just went straight on in the first week of January and actually blocked out eight different holidays. And then said, and committed, right, yeah, I'm, this is what I'm doing here. This is when I'm going there. And I blocked it out. Now I've just got to get the money to pay for them. But I'm just gradually hacking away at them. And, you know, I've just paid for Slovakia and Scotland in in uh, in April, but it's it's setting that time aside and booking it out in my diary, and then you know I've created a little fund. So every time I I get paid, I put five well, percent goes into my Slovakia fund, five percent goes into my uh, you know whatever that particular holiday destination is, and just make it happen. You know because it's so easy to to say I wouldn't mind doing that. I've always thought about doing that, or I've always dreamed of doing that, but not actually taking time to do it. Um, and I or think ending up get, 365 days later going, oh, I still really want to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think if you have a, you know, a brilliant idea uh, and you have these skills and talents, then then do it. You know, I think you you owe it to yourself to to create something, to use your, your, your skills, your creativity and your imagination to create something that potentially is going to give you a bigger standing in your community and in your niche. So you're not just another photographer. You're this photographer who's created this course, who's written this book, who does this different, these particular projects. So you stand out more. And also ultimately, once you've created these projects and courses and books and stock sites, what, whatever it is, whatever way of monetizing your business a bit more, it gives you a lot more authority and a lot more opportunity starts to come your way because you're thinking differently. You're standing out from the crowd. And, you know, it gets to a stage where your passive income exceeds what you've got to pay out each month just to pay your bills. And that's a really good feeling when you wake up knowing that, well, even if I didn't get any work at all this month, I'd still be able to pay my mortgage, drive the car, eat and go on holiday. You know, so that and that is, you know, that is a really good potential for people because now we're in a position where we have more opportunity than we've ever had in our entire lives at our fingertips. And if we can't sell our products, there was plenty of other people who can sell them for us yeah. for a commission and for a price. And that's what I do with my online courses. Yeah, I create it. I create the content, but I don't sell them myself. You never see any of my own courses apart from my mentoring program on my website. I sell those independently. I'm just launching another two next month, which will be sold by, um, a podcast that has a huge audience and then we just split the the proceeds um so it's 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 viable for both parties you know so tracy could create an amazing calendar and then she could sell that through a horse charity if it was for a particular breed of horses you know or luke could create an amazing uh, you know trek around yorkshire in his his camper van publicize that and then that could be he could create the book and then he could talk on podcasts uh, all about camper vans and camping and wild camping and country life and utilize these huge podcasts or blogs or you know shows to get some airplay to get some credibility and authority for what he's done uh, you know in the past week i've been on two podcasts which as soon as i go up on a podcast i see the book sales go up so it does work you know I can't lie, Tracy. That was one of my thoughts as well. I thought, actually, I might just drive. I might just close my eyes, pick a random place around me on the map and go there. <laughs> because at the moment, you just don't know with those trains. <laughs> um, they're uh, definitely changing. And Luke, you could make that into a thing. Like when you turn up to your, like, if you do a shoot, you could turn up in the camper van. <laughs> Your clients could know you as the person that turns up in the camper van. The van with the van. <laughs> well, funny enough, when it, James James Walker, who's on a uh, he's a commercial photographer, uh, does a lot of industrial photography, and that is part of his niche, and that's part of his that makes him 
different. He's got a really cool kitted out camper van. It's got satellite TV, everything, you know, and he, and he can pull up on site and work on a construction site or he can work on the side of the A1 where they're putting in a new, I don't know, a new bypass or something like that. And he can work from his camper. So he can go out, do the shots, get back to the camper van, process the stuff. You know, he doesn't even need to ho his, his um, clients to book him a hotel. He's on site. He's in his camper van. It's brilliant. And I think that's a really cool, that it makes him stand out. You know, so he's got it, it clusters really like a mobile studio, a mobile office, a mobile workspace. Uh, and that'd be really, really cool. Yeah, I'm jealous of all of you guys. So you should all be out in your camper vans because I don't have one and I want one. So you should all be getting out. <laughs> that's how I feel. Um, yeah, I just, there's so much with creativity and, and how you can increase it or how you get yourself to, to do new things. One of the things I used to do with my sessions when I had a studio was the first 45 minutes of the session would be the money shots. And if the kids or the family was still energetic, because obviously you, you have a length of time with kids until they decide they don't want their picture taken yeah. or dogs or anything. I would then spend the last 15 minutes photographing something new because I'd already have made the money because from the money shots and the standard yeah. stuff that people always buy. But then that last 15 minutes of the session, if the kids were still going, I would then try something I've wanted to try or something I've seen or something I've researched mm -hmm. that wouldn't actually matter if they purchased or not because I've already done the shots that always sell but it's allowing me to incorporate creativity into that session. And I'm mainly coming into family portraits because what I found is since I've been an automotive photographer, I actually haven't had the creativity block issue. And that's because I now, my sessions last three to four hours. They pay 500 quid before they even start the shoot. So the session is kind of almost that high end and they're paying for me for my creativity with the stuff I do now. They're, whereas with the families, because of the averages I was working with, the number of sessions I had to have through in a day, knowing that I was going to be selling in the viewing room rather than pre-selling like I do now, which is mainly that if someone's going to book me, it's usually because they want to book me already because of the, the brand I've built and the awareness I've built within in the, the automotive industry. Whereas before, because we had to sell afterwards, you had to be less creative because you had to do the shots that always sold. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't always the ones that you would put on your website to show the creativity. So it does vary depending on what you're doing as a photographer. If you're doing six to seven sessions a day, you're going to start losing your creativity. Um, whereas if you're doing one session high end, you've brought, and it's three to four hours, you've probably got a lot more creativity to give and do. And then it's looking for ideas. And all ideas that I look for with my bikes and the cars are actually looking at other genres. I don't look at many automotive photographers because I like my creativity to come from other niches that I can bring in what they do and adjust mm -hmm. it to me. So my stuff is then different and unique and creative in, in what I do. So yeah. I'm staying ahead of myself mm -hmm. because if I just look at the stuff within my niche, I will never become better than what's already in my niche. Yeah. And I think, you know, sometimes with, I mean, creativity, as in you on about um, families, you know, I had a, you know, we had a very successful boudoir studio that did over 4,000 boudoir shoots, but I must admit, you know, and I used to get the mickey taken at me by the, by the lads down the pub, you know, how can you get bored of photographing women in underwear every day? And I said, well, you just go through the the same routine. And it, so I used to make it a, a point. I used to look at magazines like Vogue and stuff like that, looking at, the shapes and and the poses and say right at the end of that shoot i'm going to do this one pose 
I'm going to do it differently. And I also used to do that for weddings as well and try and come up because, again, you, you put yourself through the same routines with weddings. Oh, we'll go over next to this tree. You put people into these particular poses that they do all the time. And then I would look at more like, you know, chat magazines or lifestyle magazines where it had couples in and, and see the way that they'd been posed by that photographer. It wasn't a wedding magazine. And then see if I could incorporate into that just for one idea. And then that shakes up my my style and just give something different you know so it's it's all about doing something a little bit different looking for creativity and looking for for ideas and incidentally tracy i've, I've done the hadrian's wall from uh, coast to coast about three or four times as a, as a walk and it's absolutely fantastic and if you do get up here to northumberland or down here to northumberland i'm not sure where you are um give me a shout because i'm i'm in uh, rothbury and we're in within the um the northumberland 250 it's called now so it's a it, it's a bit like the north coast 500 yeah. and jennifer with the you saying there's a photographer over in the us that actually does road trips and then schedules creates the book shoots around the road trips or vice versa so she's something i've been looking at doing here um with the automotive stuff i do because i do tend to go all over is like booking a week in wales and then offering the sessions there and then going up to scotland offering the sessions there um, so it can be a really, really um, fun way of doing it. But also you've got so much social media content if you're doing something like that because you're documenting on the stories and the highlights on your reels, the travel and the journey, not just the sessions. And I know as photographers, a lot of people I chat to, they struggle with what content to post in their reels, what content. And Jeff is amazing at that stuff. He is amazing at helping you look at outside the box for what to post in your blogs and for what to do and post on your social media. But something like you're traveling in the UK and photographing something creative, fun, different, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you suddenly have nearly a year's worth of content probably just in that one trip that you can keep sharing all the time. I mean, I know I'm looking at upgrading my iPhone right now contract is up so guess what the five phone battery is dying halfway through the day would you believe i know they've admitted that they do stuff like that but it drives me crazy but i'm actually <laughs> thinking with the upgrade i need to upgrade to something that's going to create great videos for my behind the scenes for mm. the stuff i'm doing outside of photographing and so many photographers forget to post that stuff on their social media they forget to share them and people buy from people they know and trust and like. Yeah. So you, you've got to include you. And including you is those little trips you do. It is that train journey to nowhere. You yeah. document it. You put up a reel about it. You say, mm -hmm. this is what I love. Look how funny this is. And I know that means you have to take the phone. But if you've got it on airplane mode, you can film and take pictures all day on it. You don't yeah. have to be disturbed. You can just take the pictures and the, and the, the videos so that you can utilize them and show people the stuff that you do outside of the business. And that's what you can be posting to get your clients engaging with who you are and liking who you are so that they want to book you just as much as seeing your imagery because the imagery is only part of why they book you. It's not the full part of why you book you. And using the phone to be creative, like we were saying earlier about taking the phone out and taking pictures and I've actually put up before this was captured with an iPhone. And they're like, no. Yeah. I'm like, yes, because as a photographer, we look at things differently. Mm -hmm. Totally. And I, th I think the you know what you what you what you take the picture on is is to an expect extent irrelevant, isn't it? And I think it's, you know, it, there's that old saying that the best camera in the world is the one that you've got in your hand. And and quite often we don't have our cameras in our hands when we're just out walking the dog and the, the deer runs past, you know, it's the mobile phone that we have that we grab a picture from. And and a lot of photographers, you know, feel the need to say, oh, but this was taken on my mobile as like a get out clause because they're worried in case somebody's going to judge them. But I think, you know, mobile phones are brilliant for, for getting that creativity and 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 you know, keeping that passion and being to capture something that otherwise you might not have been able to to capture. And, you know, sometimes just going to a different place with a camera, somewhere that you've never been before and then getting that, that excitement back. And that's what I, you know, that was, again, one of my big goals for this year was to, you know, sell all my camera kit, 
go over to something really lightweight that I can travel with and, and weather weatherproof. And that's why I went for the the Olympus OM1 because it's light and weatherproof and stuff. And I can take it on my travels. I can go up mountains. And instead of being lazy and just getting out a mobile phone, I can actually enjoy the photography aspect as well. Um, so I've started to book days off. Like I had a day off earlier in the week to go and photograph a church. And I'd seen this particular church that I wanted to photograph because it was 900 year old and had, yeah, you know, amazing gravestones from from like the 1600s in, and I thought well, I'm going to go through there and take it take a day out to walk around that local area, look at the little village, look at the buildings, look at look at the views, and take some pictures of the church. And it's 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 that sort of stuff that gets you excited. You, know, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Yeah, you know, I probably spent five quid in petrol to get there and back, and got a bit of cake and a coffee on the way back as I always do you know so yeah it's it but but I enjoyed it it was time out for me and it was time out for my creativity and I found somewhere I'd never been before I've lived here seven years and this place is only you know 15 minutes from where I live I did think I might have to find that church when I saw the images come up I was like oh that <laughs> looks fun <laughs> that looks a nice place to shoot so yeah um, I did think that when you put it up, but it is amazing, absolutely amazing what you can do by visiting a new place and what you can be inspired with. I think there's a new place, especially if you're um, motivated by tea and cake, guys. This is the secret to everything. We, You <laughs> may not have noticed, but every single live we talk about donuts, teas or cake. Mm. Cake and donuts are the secret to successful life. <laughs> But then, don't it, tell it, anyone it, else. It, <laughs> I mean, if you listen, you know, if you watch a lot of, if you if you listen to a lot of podcasts, um, and if you you read a lot of blogs or you you follow particular brands, um, you'll see these same types of photographers coming up time and time again who uh, who put themselves out there, you know, and, and there's there's that thing. It it can be quite easy to knock somebody else and say, oh, there's such and such again. He's working for Canon or such and such. He's doing this for Nikon or this person's on this particular podcast, but that all that person is doing is thinking outside the box. They they're approaching people, and if you if you have a great idea, if it is inspirational, if it is very creative, you know, like photographing the indigenous tribes in in Mexico or cataloging the the work that the nurses have done, then do it. You know, do it, and then once you've done it, approach people who already have a community or an audience that would love the content that you've created the project they've created and and give it some life and get it seen because you've created it now you know now it's a chance to get it out to the world and then from there then you can look at monetizing things but i think it's a it's a it's a brilliant way to 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 have a bit of a passion give make yourself a little bit different and then you know you, when you've created something a little bit different and you've looked at things a different way You've got a reason to approach these podcasts. You're not just another photographer wanting to go in to talk about your portrait business. You have a mission. You have a a passion that you've you've created this project, and that could potentially bring you additional money. Hundred percent. So I'm just keeping an eye on the comments as you were uh, were going through that. Then, um, sorry guys, I know we're getting quite a lot of spam. I hope Luke, that is not why you disappeared, and you actually <laughs> had to go somewhere because it, it has been. Has been a few coming up there. Um, so yeah. but what, that's that's one thing you will never ever sell on a live is photo editing, um, or on, <laughs> or on spammy, spamming on anybody's LinkedIn posts. I don't think uh, nobody nobody wants nobody's going to jump on your profile and suddenly book you to to edit their photos if you spam their content or spam a live. So, but unfortunately, that's something that happens on on all forms of social media. Um, so you know, if people want to make a living, do it do it nice. Yeah, people buy from people they like, uh, not from people who spam. Which saying that, from the comment, I uh, am avoiding behind the scenes. Well, stop avoiding it. <laughs> That's all I'm going to tell you. Start off, instead of talking to the camera and maybe doing your face, start off by, so what I've done before is I've set my phone up, put it, somewhere within the region of where I'm photographing put it on one of those little tripody things press record for the video and then I've done the session 
I've been photographing. I've actually got one I need to put up on my Instagram, and it'll probably go up on the mindset one. So you'll, if you want to see it, um, you can always message me, and I'll make sure I send it to you before. Where I actually just literally set the phone up, and I recorded it. And what I will then do is phones are, are good enough now to screen grab where you want to screen grab to show the behind the scenes. So you don't even have to use the video to get yourself started and to get yourself comfortable with sharing behind the scenes. You could literally screen grab from the video those moments that you feel comfortable sharing and they don't have to show you yet. They can show part of you. They can show, you know, if you're a dog photographer, they show the dog running and jumping over your head yeah. if you take a picture. It doesn't have to necessarily be you talking to the camera. To start with, I do yeah. advise eventually. That's a brilliant that idea. But yeah, I found it works so well. I mean, I did it when I was photographing some of the, the shots I sent you the other day and I just set it up and basically I didn't have a model. So I photographed myself with a trigger. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I yeah. just set record up on the, the, the phone, put it next to the camera and filmed me being my own model and triggering the camera. And you never have to use those pictures, yeah. but it gives you... You can play with posing without having to play with posing on a client if mm -hmm. you don't feel comfortable as well. That's a good way of being, and that really went from one track to another then massively in one go. Yeah. But if you ever don't have somebody to model for you or you're worried about posing someone, if you literally put the video down, not even to share, and do the pictures on the camera, get a trigger, pose yourself in about six different ways, then have a look at the back of the camera and go, that pose worked really well, that pose didn't, this pose looks rigid, that pose doesn't, then you can learn so much and mm. become more creative without being worried about talking to the or posing someone and feeling like you don't know what you're doing because you're photographing yourself, so it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, yeah so that was just really yeah. random how that travelled from one thing to another. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's a really good idea, you know, and 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 also people like you know people if people can see it's you as well, you know, like the behind the scenes stuff and you utilizing your your, you know, if you you a lot of you can get these mobile phone um, tripods, can't you, off Amazon for like ten quid, selfie stick with a tripod, and they've got the little trigger release on, and you can set that up, and then you can go and you can be taking your picture, turn yourself slightly to an angle so you can see your profile just pop away on the little trigger release and you've got some pictures of yourself doing whatever you do and people love behind the scenes stuff works absolutely fantastic on um on linkedin and that's something i must do you know i'm going to take that uh, away from today's discussion and i'm going to try that i'm going to stick that on my to-do list for next week and i'm going to try that on wednesday which is my day off for going out and getting some pictures done and i'm going to try and get some pictures of me with my camera taken from my mobile phone of photographing whatever I'm going to be photographing. So that's a, a great idea. And instantly, um, Xavier Clark, he's got a, a fantastic idea that we're, we're busy working on at the moment. And he's he's doing um, a, a, a street photography tour of London, which is going to go around London and take some of its some some of its prominent places. And but it's going to be it's going to be a street photography tour with a difference. I don't want to give too much away, but it's going to include some some stories, some history, some of the amazing architecture um, from names that we recognise uh, and you know that we've heard hundreds of times before on on TV uh, in books. He's going to take us in little places that um, you know that you you that you've probably heard of, but you've never actually been before. And this is something that. Um, Xavier is doing as a project which will ultimately become a passive income project and not only could it be a an online course you know like a course it could become an online course because you could get somebody to film it it can become a book as well a book project so there's lots from it and I'm really looking forward to to join in I said to Xavier once we get this course up and running I'm, I want to be one of the the ones to come down and do that and I know uh, Claire's Claire's going to be helping him with his uh, his wording as well uh, on putting this course together so um yeah, I think it's, you know, if, if anything, go into to March, right, in, right down for March is, yeah, set aside some time, block that time out to to go and have your trip to nowhere, your train ride to nowhere, or to go to a cafe and do a bit brainstorming and leave the phone in the car and just think about how you can create 
this this new bit of creativity, uh, take it to another direction. And then once you've got it to another direction, you've got a project and an idea in mind, then you can start thinking about how to monetize that. And if you do have a project and an idea and you come up with it and you want a bit of advice on how to monetize it, or you want me to to look over it, then drop me a message on, on LinkedIn or Facebook. I'm always happy to give a little voice clip back and help people. I just said it's, it's a brilliant idea to do for March. I can't even believe. What are we a few? It's not that far away, is it? Next week is March already, which yeah. is crazy. Yeah. I'll add to that challenge of you doing your train journey. And um, I will include maybe if you feel like it to do a image every day that isn't part of your work. So every day you've got to photograph something that isn't what you photograph for work. And it could well, be that anything. Could be cake. <laughs> huh? That could be cake. It could be cake. It yeah. could be. It could be apps. And you don't even have to use your camera. You could maybe use your phone, but you do have to look from it from a technical aspect. And what you'll find is at the end of that month, you'll have learned so much mm -hmm. just from photographing something that is outside your comfort zone. Yeah. Um, Xavier, did I pronounce that right? Xavier, I'm really worried about pronouncing his name wrong. <laughs> um, in your having the idea of being in front of a camera makes you feel a little bit sick. I would start repeating to yourself every day and anybody else who feels really uncomfortable. I am safe being seen. I am safe being heard. I am safe showing people who I am. And those kind of things you'll want to repeat to yourself daily. I enjoy being in front of a camera, <laughs> which is going to be a little bit far fetched to start with. And you probably will laugh and not feel it. But if you want to retrain your brain to accept a new awareness and to let go of the insecurities and the fear of being in front of the camera yourself, you need to rewire the brain. And to rewire the brain, we need to put these statements that are the opposite of what you feel to your brain. And then if you can, I would start visualizing, spending five minutes in the evening before you go to sleep, visualizing yourself confident, happy, and um, comfortable, I'm trying to think the right word then, mm. in front of a camera having your behind the scenes. And imagine doing it, but feeling good about it. Your brain knows no different between visualization stuff and what is actually happening in the world. So what you visualize, it can't tell the difference. So if you visualize yourself as a confident, happy person in front of a camera, showing your clients who you are, you will become that because you will train your brain in that way. So it's a really, really good idea to um, start working towards that to help overcome those fears blocking you from showing your clients who you mm -hmm. are because i'm pretty sure who you are is awesome and your clients yeah. can see who you are or they won't be able to book you um, so and the thing is any good. little thing you know I, I hated standing up at school i've always been terrified of public speaking but now i do regular speaking and and i've just you know in the, the 9th 10th of 10th of march i'm down at a, a big photography um studio operations um uh, event but this has been run by we have speakers from sort of amazon from asos from phillips from bowden it, it's a big huge thing so i'm slightly out of my comfort zone because i'm not speaking to photographers who are like part of my community i'm speaking to big organizations big studios big e-commerce places but i thought you know what jeff just do it i'm always telling people to put themselves outside the comfort zone so you know put yourself outside your comfort zone and, you know, like Mark says, wasn't comfortable first speaking to camera. I, I oh, when I, I cringe when I see some of my first YouTube videos. And funny enough, you know, I go on and I do a lot of podcasts. I do about 30, 40 podcasts a year. And it's very rarely that I will listen back to my own podcast. But loads of people say and say, Jeff, I loved your podcast. I got a load from it. So that, that for me, um, gets rid of the fear of actually doing it. And yesterday I was doing a, I had a headshot and branding shoot. Uh, in Newcastle with Darren Irwin, who's a Newcastle headshot photographer. And secretly I was dreading it because I I hate my smile. 
Um, but then I always like on a headshot look like I want to kill somebody. You know, so he had to try and get me to smile or try and make me look more approachable. But, we're, you know, and, and getting somebody to smile who doesn't like smiling. But he did it. He made me feel really confident. Um, he never said, said smile once. You know, he was great with coaxing me and 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 getting me to 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 come out my shell and get my photograph taken. So I had a, a, a yeah. You know, so it was it was being on the other side of the camera. And I know for a lot of us photographers, we don't like that. I'm looking forward to seeing that. You <laughs> took my last headshot that I'm oh, using at the yeah, moment. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and honestly, I I honestly think you are going to be amazing at that talk in a couple of weeks. Yeah, like I still get the, the lineup, still... and you fit in. Honestly, you fit in so well into that lineup. Yeah, well, I had I had a, a meeting with the the head of operations today, and I, it still had like a little butterflies just thinking. But then one of the speakers from one of the big companies came on, and she was like, "Jeff, can we do like a, a fireside sit down um, chat as opposed to her getting up and doing a presentation?" Because she said she was really nervous about speaking, and I was like. Wow. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, we all have these little things, don't we? And it's just about putting ourselves out there. So it's like that percentage, 56% of people in the room are worrying the other people don't like them. Yeah. So if four of you stood together, two of you are worrying, but you think you're the only one that's worrying that nobody's mm -hmm. going to like you, but actually half the room you're stood in is all having the same doubts and fears as you are. Which always amazes me. And I, I always remind myself of that when I'm stood in a room on a big networking type place, because I'm like, literally half of these people are feeling exactly how I feel right now. Mm. <laughs> and it <laughs> kind of helps you make, makes you feel better a little bit. <laughs> well, that was, you know, last year at the Society's Convention, you know, one of the speakers who always comes across very, very confident and does lives and webinars. Uh, she approached me and she says, how are you feeling about getting up on stage, Chef? And I says, oh, I'm fine because I had done public speaking before. Um, and I used to have to get up when I worked for the intelligence services. I used to have to get up and do an intelligence brief, which was really hard because that was something I wasn't really interested about. It's a bit easier when, you, when, you, um, when you're talking about something you're passionate about, like photography or marketing. And I said, I says, oh, yeah, I'm not too bad. And she said, I'm absolutely terrified. I've been up all night thinking about it because... Um, it's the first one I've ever done. And I never would have guessed because she always comes across great on webinars and, you know, but she'd never done an in-person speaking event and she was absolutely fabulous. You, you never would have taught, you never would have known that she was nervous and, and and you know, but it's it's something we've got inside, but we think it comes across when we speak and it, it doesn't, nobody notices it. We, we might do, but nobody really notices it. And it's also that thing where you think you're the only person. And you're really, really not the only person that feels yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. many of them, even the behind the scenes stuff, mm -hmm. you know, we all look at it and think, really, it, you know, it can be that we can have the same doubts and fears. It's just some people teach themselves to push through it and make their end goal more important than how they feel in the moment their end goal is more important than their comfort zone. Yeah. It becomes a much bigger desire than the fear. And they start stepping through that fear into or towards what they want to achieve in life. Yeah. And then once you've done it once, you're like, oh, wasn't that bad? And then you do get a buzz for it. You know, I get a buzz doing podcasts. I love it because I love to put, you know, put information out there that will help and inspire other people. And talking about helping and inspiring other people, uh, you've got your five-day challenge starting very Ooh, soon. 20th of March, yes. It's just after the Society's convention because I thought it was better to do it just after, um, especially when everybody who's going there will feel motivated after being there. This will keep the motivation going from there. But it's going to be amazing. It just kickstarts your mindset, Look, starts looking at what beliefs are holding you back, starts introducing you how to change some of those things, and also looking at those little things like we've been chatting today about does your environment create creativity? Does your Is your environment a place for productivity? So we'll look at things like that so that you can increase your, your productivity, lessen your procrastination, and just get moving forward, really, with things in business and life. So, yeah, I'm, I can't wait. I really cannot wait. 
So there we just have to go to uh, Michelle's website, which is uh, photographersmindset.com. And where is it, Michelle? Is it? Um... Uh, just click yeah. down it and then it's five day photographers mindset workshop. Yeah. And it's it's a free workshop, isn't it? You've just got to register. Yeah, it's free. Yeah. So you get free. Five, totally days. Free. five days with Michelle. You get access to my community, which isn't on Facebook. It is its own individual community, but it does have an app. So you've got an app that you can um, come on when you want to and when you need to. And you have things like when this, when we're live, it go, the events go in there and you can chat to other like-minded photographers who are feeling the same way that you feel. So it is really cool space to hang out in and be. <laughs> cool. So, and the dog's behaved himself as well. So we he's, got through I don't that. know where he's gone now. He barked a little bit, but it, he's... Yeah, he's going to go out for a nice long walk now. And um, I'm going to start packing all my stuff up and and getting home. And the challenge of putting, and I'm sure some of you photographers know this, of a large paper roll, which has had to be delivered here for my shoot session on Saturday, um, of a 2.72 metres that I now have to try and find a way of getting in the car <laughs> to drive home. <laughs> I might do a BTS, um, I might do a video on my phone. How to get it into the car. Of me trying to get it in the car, because that could be quite amusing. <laughs> um, and, and we've got one more next week, haven't we? We do, next and you're going to ask me what it is. And I have no clue, because I'm not at home with all my documents. <laughs> so we'll, we'll call it the surprise. Next week's the surprise. <laughs> the surprise webinar. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we'll be, uh, um, yes, we'll let, Michelle, will you, do you want to, uh, yeah, I'll pop it in the comments. That's LinkedIn, isn't it? I'll pop that in the LinkedIn comments. Um, I can do that now before I forget because I know what will happen once I walk the dog and head off and do all the things. So, so I'll uh, I'll set away uh, Monday. I will be putting the uh, the link out for our final um, LinkedIn webinar, which will be next Thursday at two p.m. So yep, the surprise. I think we should just call the it that. The surprise. I feel like we shouldn't shouldn't even call it what we were going to call it. <laughs> we'll call it the surprise. We'll keep it the subject, but we'll call it the surprise session. <laughs> so thanks again, guys. Uh, we had a great turnout today and some fantastic comments. And it would be uh, great, as I say, if you you know if you do get a project together, uh, for you to message both myself and Michelle. I would love to hear about it and if we can be of any help at all. Uh, only too happy to help so have yeah. a great rest of the day and a fantastic weekend thank you very much michelle for your your time it's been absolutely amazing and look forward to seeing you next thursday yeah i look forward to seeing you next thursday thank you for having me on i love doing these um series of sessions with you it's brilliant, brilliant. well thanks again guys <laughs>